All right, 50 years of martial arts stories. 50 years and counting, because I'm still in it. I think I talked to you about my friend Dennis Robinson, who's the guy that, uh, like I say, a natural born fighter who learned karate and could fight with karate. His main aspect was, was fighting. So uh, as we became sparring partners, uh, as we tested for the green belt, and he, he by the way, he was, he was merciless, so he wasn't going to take it easy on me. He's going to try to show off on me in front of all the, all the uh, instructors there. So we're in this room, about six black belts, and, and he and I are in the room, and we're, we're, we're going through all these movements. But the, 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 the apex of it was we, we had to spar each other. So I knew what was coming. And I knew I, I only have like a few seconds to, to gain, you know, some, 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 some notoriety in this match. So I, I actually, when we, when we bowed to each other, we bowed to the instructor and bowed to each other, I made, I made my body language look like I wasn't really quite ready. And I, I could kind of peripherally see that he's getting ready to just blast me so he could look good in front of these people. But when I made myself look like I wasn't quite ready, I caught him with a perfect sidekick. As soon as they said start, I caught him with a perfect sidekick and then spun and caught him with the back fist right in the face. And that, that started it. And then the rest of the fight was more, he's coming at me with roundhouse kicks and punches. So the rest of the fight was more defensive on my part. And I mean, I did some aggression, but Dennis was a, a force to be reckoned with. Plus he had me by about 30 pounds of pure muscle. But anyway, that technique really got the notice of the, the higher, higher belts and they, they really you know, appreciated my, the, the, they saw the, the kind of the, the, the strategy that I employed. And um, it was a great, great time. Even Dennis, you know, he respected it. And uh, we began to really train in earnest. So now I think by this time I'm about, about 16. And the, the, the movies came out. So you had all these martial arts movies. Yeah, so the movies came out. So at that time I was very influenced. There was a movie called The Five Fingers of Death. Five Fingers of Death, for those old, old heads that know, that was one of the first karate movies that came out. People jumping up in the air and, you know, hitting and breaking boards and whatnot. So I began to practice jumping. Like I'd stand um, next to a picnic table, jump on top of the table, jump back down, jump up, jump back down. I, I was doing stuff like that and then trying to land lightly because in my mind, I figured if I, I'm only 16, I'll keep doing this. And by the time I'm 25, I'll be able to do jump 10, 15 feet up in the air, I'm going to become a superhuman. So that's the type of thinking I had. I would, I would just practice, bang, bang, 100 times, 100 times, 100 times, kicks, punches, everything. I just really, really got, you know, into it and thinking that I could, I could do that. And I, at the time, at that age, I still had, you know, an idealistic uh, mind. So my practice was heavily influenced by the five fingers of death. Then the next thing you know, Bruce Lee comes out. Fist of Fury, Chinese connection. They were playing Fist of Fury in the town, you know, maybe uh, 20 minutes from where I lived. They played the Fist of Fury and Chinese connection. It's called a double feature, two movies. Do you know? And back then, the movies would stay there for like a month. I saw Fist of Fury, Chinese Connection, at least 15 times, just by myself. I saw it a few times with friends, but I would get on my little motorcycle, drive to the movie, get in there and watch that movie. I can, I can almost repeat every kick, every, every fight scene in those movies. I became obsessed with Bruce Lee and his, his persona his practice and, and modeled my, uh, uh, my attitude and training regimen, heavily influenced by Bruce Lee and uh, Muhammad Ali. But Bruce Lee, uh, during that time, it really broke my heart when he died in, in 1972. I mean, I was, I was crushed. I was crushed. I did a little ritual in, in honor of his spirit. But Bruce, uh, uh, 
Those movies help to motivate me, and I know a lot of my peers too. The movies help to motivate us to really practice diligent, practice consistently. So those, during that time, uh, I was very, very influenced by that, and um, I still can get a charge out of it. As I move for further, we got Jet Li, got Donnie Yen. I'm just motivated by just the aspect. 50 years later, I'm still excited when I get up in the morning because I got to get my practice in every day. Every day, I like pay the rent. I call it paying the rent by getting my practice in. I have what's called minimum daily requirements, which I, I've been sharing with you on these pages, and I want you to like, subscribe, and share it to my page and pick out something and start doing it and do it for 21 days and then add something more to it and do that for 21 days until you stack up for yourself a golden hour and never forget you're born to win. That golden hour needs to be something you do that's non-negotiable, something that you do all the time, like brushing your teeth and taking a shower and, and have that for yourself and keep that for the rest of your life and never forget you're born to win.